committed relationship? Looking for real advice on having love and enriching your relationship? You are in the right place. Welcome to The Couples Expert with Stuart Fensterheim. Hello, and welcome to The Couples Expert podcast. This is Stuart Fensterheim, The Couples Expert, here to speak to you about having a closer, more connected relationship with your spouse or partner. This week's podcast is on how anger impacts the marriages in our life. But before we get into that topic, I do want to wish everyone a happy 4th of July holiday and talk a little bit about what my wife and I did this year, because what we decided to do is something different. We've normally gone to the firework displays, but this year we wanted to do something a little bit more intimate. So what we decided to do is to go on the deck of our home in Scottsdale and from our deck, we are fortunate that we can see a number of different firework displays in the different areas. I know from the deck, we can see Westworld. For those of you that know the Scottsdale area, the Princess Hotel. And I believe in the distance, we also saw the Hyatt Ganey Ranch fireworks. It was so much fun. And what we were able to do by doing something smaller because one of the things I've been talking about in the past on this podcast is the whole concept that you don't have to do something really big and that sometimes smaller is bigger. So what we were able to do is we went on our deck and we opened a bottle of champagne that we got on one of our journeys and we drank some champagne along with some limoncello. And limoncello is something that we've made ourselves. And I don't know how many of you know what limoncello is, but it's a drink that we first learned about when we went to Italy. And there we were able to get some free samples. And we learned, my wife took the time to really learn how to make it ourselves. And we made some limoncello. And actually, she's also made something called grapefruit cello. And what those are, are lemons that you ferment for about six weeks in some very strong vodka. And from that, we created something that tastes good and felt so special because we did it, just the two of us. Because as we go on walks during the day, we've been picking lemons and grapefruits and peeling them and putting it into this concoction that really was so much fun and it brought us such joy that we did this together. And that's how we spent our 4th of July. These kind of experiences really help the two of you feel close to one another and understand how much you enjoy each other's company and that the joy in your lives are a result of the two of you and the excitement that you bring and the happiness you have together. This topic today on anger really is relevant to this because regardless of all this fun and excitement that the two of you can bring by making things like limoncello or having these experiences, the anger quite often can take over and bring your relationship into question for the two of you. And you begin to ask yourselves, how toxic is my marriage? If there's a great deal of anger in this relationship, it really can be like a metastasis of cancer to the happiness of your marriage. What my hope today is, is that this podcast could give you some tools that would help you minimize the negative effects of the anger on what might otherwise be a wonderful relationship. We want to look at what are some of the ways that anger outbursts can destroy your relationship. One of the first ones that come to mind for me, for those of you that have children, is the impact on kids. Children truly are the most affected by what happens in the environment. If the two of you are struggling and are doing some destructive things of each other or even of yourself, they are spectators to that. They are watching that 
very intently. And that what they see is a war of words. Children who grow up with these ongoing battles develop characteristics of being so incredibly negative and hostile. I recall something in my own past with the kids. I recall having a great deal of hostile fighting and arguing with my ex-wife and really afraid of the impact on my kids. So what I did one day is I went to them after she and I had one of the worst fights that we had had. And I went to them to really sit down and tell them that marriage, this is not what marriage is. This isn't normal. I told them that this isn't what they should expect if one day they find someone. The thing that freaked me out the absolute most is my older child looked me square in the face, and she was, I believe, around eight at the time, and said, Dad, but you and Mom don't fight that much. The reality, however, was it was almost every day. We'd have some sort of turmoil. My fears were coming true. That the kids will see this as a normal part of a relationship. Because it was. It was just normal for them. So if they had a relationship one day that looked like that, they wouldn't see a problem in it. They would just feel empty and alone. Children are great imitators of life. And without recognizing the repercussions, what you're leaving them with is a life of unhappiness and loneliness. The second thing that occurs quite readily is you lose the love of your spouse. Words of hostility that the two of you send to each other send a message that you don't care. It breeds bitterness and resentment. Your happiness of whatever you have, and I said this earlier in this podcast, whatever joys that the two of you bring to the table, whatever happiness that you bring to one another can just nastily disappear. And all that's left is a feeling of unimportance. And this, more often than not, is happens a little bit at a time. It chips away at it. And it's filled your memories of one another and the interactions you have are filled with memories of demeaning words. And both of you begin to lose respect for one another, respect for yourself, and you lose the love that you once had. The respect for your spouse is critical. A happy relationship is one in which both of you have mutual respect for one another. That eventually what occurs is the spouse will then decide that you aren't worthy of the attention and energy to go into it. They develop this hard, hard shell and a protection of everything that they feel and they start looking behind their back for when the next attack's gonna come. These aggressive behaviors put them off to a place that say, I can't allow myself to feel loving toward my partner because if I do, I will regret it. So what ends up happening for both of you is a feeling of emptiness and loneliness. And it's quite easy to stay bitter because your environment is filled with a constant reminder that love is not the overriding feeling in the home, but watching your back and you end up freezing out, freezing your partner out, not allowing yourself to be impacted by it. Typically, 
when that begins to happen, that's the precursor to divorce or ending the marriage. Because I've had couples who come into my office and what they begin to say to me is these awful things about each other. Bitterness, resentment, disrespect. And when I look at them, it's like they're not even affected. They just seem like they're having a conversation about what are we going to do for dinner tonight? And as I sit here, my gut begins to churn up. And that to me is a sign, a sign that says to me, we have a big problem on our hands. The anger is devastating this couple. It's important though to remember anger is a normal part of every relationship. So what we're talking about is destructive anger that is not about resolution, but anger for anger's sake. And what I want to do is talk a bit about tips that you could do today to help you minimize how destructive the anger may become for the two of you. The first thing is you need to learn how to address the issues immediately as they're happening. If you wait too long, there's a buildup. There's a buildup of these intense emotions that make things worse, not better. So often people are afraid to talk about the issues, thinking it's going to make things worse or that it's not going to go well. And what happens is that buildup then becomes explosive. And that what ends up happening is more like a catharsis and not working on resolving the issues. And it's really confusing to one or both of you of why the intensity of this, these feelings are so great. You know, and it's similar to, if you think about the old time tea kettles with the spout that would whistle, I remember as a kid thinking, wow, it'd be really fun. I never did it because I knew how much trouble I'd get into, but that was who I was. <laughs> if you plugged up where the steam came out, some of you know what would happen. What ends up happening is there's a pop and the lid literally gets thrown up. Now, why does it do that? Because there's no escape valve. And not talking about it is the same thing. What you need to do is talk about these things right when they're happening. When you do that, how you need to talk about this is by acknowledging your partner's feelings and saying to your partner that you see how upset they are. And often, just that acknowledgement will prevent your partner from feeling so upset to that she has to prove how upset she feels or that she has to just retreat within herself or he retreat into himself. This is not gender specific. Both men and women have this issue. What you want to demonstrate to your partner that you are absolutely listening to them. People forget the communications, not just talking, but listening is half of it. And if you're a good communicator, you really can't tell yourself you are if you're also not a good listener. Because communication isn't just being clear with our dialogue, it's also sending the message to your partner that you listen to them. And when you listen, it's free from, how am I gonna respond? The focus of the listening is to understand them and take their message seriously and to use what we all call active listening techniques to be sure that your partner feels heard and then check out your assessment. Check out if what you're understanding from them is accurate. Check out as you're having this dialogue, is your partner feeling important to you? Do they hear you in the way that you communicate to them? Send the message that they feel they matter to you. Sharing your feelings of being upset is so very important. If they don't understand what you need, you need to tell them. 
you need to be the teacher of your relationship so that the two of you, both of you, feel heard, acknowledge that you're engaged with them, and that you're listening in respectful ways. If not, you need to talk about that. The other thing to really have a dialogue with your partner about is what does anger mean to them? Each of you come from a background, and next week we're going to be talking about childhood attachments. And what you need to have a dialogue with your partner about is how anger was handled when you were growing up. For some of you, anger equals being hurt physically, emotionally, spiritually, in all many different ways. And if you don't understand what anger was like for your partner in their family of origin, you don't know how they're handling it. So anger to one may be synonymous to physically being harmed so that when you get upset and begin to show feelings of anger, they're scared and they shut down. In order to have a dialogue to resolve anger, the two of you have to be able to be in a place where you feel safe. And unless you feel safe, the dialogue isn't real. Help your partner understand if they come from a past where anger equals violence, that safety will always be in the relationship, that your love for them would never allow you to do anything physical to harm them, and they need to trust you in such a deep way. So sometimes working on that trust may be necessary to be able to have a relationship where people's emotions can be shared, including anger. The two of you need to come to a place where your love for each other has you understanding that nothing inappropriate in that way would ever, ever happen and that no one's going to be hurt. Before we continue with some of the podcast, and I have an interesting motivational quote I want to read, I want to talk a little bit about this podcast. And I want to thank you again for being a member of this community where you listen to this podcast on a weekly basis where we have these types of topics and I bring guests on. And I want you to know that you can subscribe to this podcast and you can subscribe to it on my website, which is www.thecouplesexperts, that's plural, experts.com. And there you can click on a link for the podcast page and then subscribe. And you get notified about when these podcasts come out. In each podcast, I try to have tips and information on a wide variety of subjects. So if you subscribe and please send me a review on iTunes because the more information I have about what is working for all of you, uh, I absolutely listen to those and read those and make changes as a result because I want this podcast to be something special. In addition, I also have a YouTube channel where I give relationship advice and I do a three minutes with Stuart three times a week as well as you can sign up for a membership on my daily notes Stuart's Daily Notes, five minutes a day with a suggestion that I make and a video message will give you something every day you can do to help your relationship. But let's go back to our show here. The quote that I was talking about is the following. It is impossible for you to be angry and laugh at the same time. Anger and laughter is mutually exclusive and you each have a power to choose which it will be. And that's by Wayne Dyer. Let's think about what this means. To me, what it means is that we all have choices that we can make in a relationship. I would like to help you choose the laughter and closeness. There are many factors that lead to an end of a relationship. 
and challenges that have to do with forgiveness and forgetting the reasons for some of the hurts that come with some of these emotions that are fueled by the anger. What happens is these emotions then can lead to emotional detachment. That emotional detachment is like a poison. And that's where the resentments build up. Because quite often, they masquerade as other emotions. And these resentments are really sneaky. One of the things we want to do is to prevent these, to destroy your relationship. And first and foremost, and I, I sort of implied this earlier when we were talking about communication, that you have to acknowledge your partner's feelings. And what the practice is, is practicing vulnerability. This has to be done in small steps so you can build up the confidence in your partner. Someone who cares about you would never intentionally do anything to cause you any pain. And you have to believe that. If you don't believe that about your partner, that's the work that has to happen first. And that's the byproduct of people not doing enough work on the front end in terms of trusting people. People that say they fall in love and get married rather quickly generally concerns me because what doesn't happen is enough of the work on the foundation of the relationship, which is that foundation of trust and truly believing that your partner would never do anything that would cause you harm because you've seen them in all sorts of situations and it's been proved to you time and time again. You need to be very honest and communicate about the issues in your relationship that might bring up resentments. These resentments could be financial, sexual, past issues with family members. All of these things are important to discuss. And you have to have a joint effort at making sure these issues have been resolved in your relationship. What comes along with all of this is taking responsibility for your part of the conflicts. This is an essential ingredient in dealing with anger, but that doesn't mean blame. We're not talking about blame. We're talking about taking ownership of your part to solving the problem of the anger in the relationship, which is a recognition of what are the triggers that bring you to that place. And trusting your partner enough to know that you can share that and that the information won't be used against you. You know, when we talk about having angry episodes and then coming back and having some dialogue about what happened, generally people begin to talk about apologies. How do I apologize for this? How do I get my partner to really trust that? Apologies are worthwhile, but only when it's appropriate. You know, I talked before about having true apology and the steps that go into that. And if you look back on one of my previous podcasts, you could, you'll hear about how do you make a true apology and what the message is that a true apology is only possible when there is a trusting, loving, vulnerable relationship. And when your partner trusts you enough to really show the kinds of injuries. What's necessary for this is a true validation of each other's experiences, which then goes along with the ability to forgive and sometimes to forget. You have to remember that the two of you are in this world together. You're on the same team. And unless you can show empathy for your partner after a disagreement, that where each of you has shared your perception of the problem, validating each other's experience, and sending the message how much you care for them and how hurt you are, that your behavior, your statements, your interaction may have caused them some pain. Your partner has to truly believe that's real. And please, this is an important piece here. Please be patient with one another and know that the two of you 
We're going to work on this together. Be patient with your partner and also with yourself. Remember, to create a really joyful relationship and an acknowledgement of each other that your partner being in your life brings your life joy and that you have some confidence in them of being able to change the behaviors that may lead to some of the hurts. By sending those messages on a regular basis, every day, in words, actions, written form, in doing this on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, a monthly basis, a yearly basis, never, ever, ever stopping, sending those messages, the two of you and the love that you have for each other will help make these changes possible. You know, last night when I was recording this, one of the things that came up on the news was this couple who's been married 70 years. And it was on Channel 12's news. And they asked them, as they always do, what is the secret of this 70th anniversary? They said the secret is laughter and holding hands. Think about that. The laughter is about the two of them really loving each other, accepting each other for who they are, laughing about things that happen in their life, laughing at each other, laughing at the fact that they were just pissed off at each other, and now, a day later, it seems to be like it never happened. Accepting that the two of them are different people, but that they can laugh about their life together because they know what's the best thing is each other and being affectionate. Those two things is about all it takes. There's a little bit more than that, but that message is a really important one. I want to talk also, before I complete this podcast, about a weekend program that we offer here at the Couples Experts, which is a weekend retreat. It's a, I call it a two days, seven conversation weekend where you and your spouse or partner could come and focus on each other and your relationship with a counseling program, which is an experiential program that I offer. On Friday night, we do a get to know each other. Saturday, it's all day and Sunday till around two o'clock. And these couples who have come in, if you go on my website, you'll see reviews from people who have attended and people who walk away from that with a much deeper understanding of each other, of what gets in the way of their relationship and knowing what they have to work on. So I urge you to check it out if that feels like it would be a helpful thing. Here are some clear tips that I want to talk about. If you're feeling resentment in your relationship, this may help you let go and move forward because what we know is dealing with the anger is really taking a look at the triggers. And the best way to do that is as a couple. So number one is express yourself. When we deny the feelings that we have, we're denying a real important piece and information that our partner needs to know. And we begin to ask ourselves, what kind of life are we living if we're not living a truthful life? If we don't share what we really feel. We have to be vulnerable. We have to be authentic. Being authentic is really what we're talking about here. It's liberating when you can turn to your partner and say how you authentically feel and know that you're doing it in a loving, caring way. You know, so many of us see things as black and white, either all good or all bad. Emotions aren't that way. There's a lot of gray. And sometimes this could really confuse us and our partners get confused. And if you're having all these different kinds of emotions, share those. Trust your partner enough to know that they're going to see it in the true intention, which is your desire to increase the closeness between the two of you. 
we talked earlier about communicating your feelings. It takes a lot of strength and courage to truly express the pain that you feel and that the pain is about not feeling close to one another and being vulnerable about that. Step out of your comfort zone. Take risks. There's a book that I read a little while back that I've been mentioning to a lot of the couples that I see, which is Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. It's a small little book, but it's really a powerful one because what you'll learn from that is that just doing what you know is right for your relationship, even if it's scary, is definitely worth it. We do need to practice forgiveness. Forgiveness is in your favor. The ability to truly forgive our partners is the greatest gift you can give yourself and give your relationship. Because not forgiving, all it does is holds the negativity and keeps you feeling alone. Letting go of resentment doesn't necessarily lead to being forgiving. But if you can get to the forgiveness, the resentment generally goes away. We can't control what other people do, but we can control how we act. When we practice living in a true sense of the word, living the life we want to live, having a relationship in the way that we know is best for us and what we need, not want, but need in our life, is a partner that we view as loving and caring. And unless we allow ourselves to forgive, not hold on to resentment, not allow the anger that comes up in our relationship to interfere with having the kind of relationship we need, which is having a relationship with a partner that truly has our back, and that we know is there for us, and we know knows all of us authentically. And as a result of that, know that we're in this world with the one person who cares about us more than anyone. So what I hope you've taken away from today is a deep understanding that anger has some good qualities because what anger allows you to do is to face the issues to go through the anger to the hurt and then together work on the hurt as a couple and have a relationship with the one person who cares about us more than anyone. I hope you've enjoyed this podcast. I hope you'll join us next week because it'll be on childhood attachments and how they impact our relationship and the importance of having a good understanding of the impact of the attachments that you and your caretaker had and how it may be impacting the relationship that you have with your partner today. Take care and please stay connected. Bye-bye.